Hi, it's Morgan and welcome to The Dove's Nest. Today I've got some fun 4th of July activities and books that I'm sharing with you. All right, if you haven't already seen my video about the changes in our curriculum, I will be sure to link that right up here um, as well as down below in the description. But I wanted to say, um, during the time that we were finding, that I was trying to figure out what we were going to do about our curriculum situation, it was um, the 4th of July week was one of the weeks sort of during those two months, (laughs) June and July basically. And 4th of July is my absolute favorite holiday. So we, like I said, we scrapped everything. We put it on hold. Aside from kind of our circle time every day and our religious studies, we didn't do anything for roughly two months, Um, except we did do 4th of July stuff. So I was going to do a quick um, sort of run through of what we did, and then I will flip the camera around and show you the books that we read. Now, I follow a blog called Taught Schooling, and I'm also on her email list, and she sends out the best freebies. She has tons and tons of freebies, whether they're um, like themed alphabet numbers, holidays. She has book themed freebies if you just need a little activity to do with one of the books you're reading. But one of the things that she emailed me was this 4th of July learning pack. You guys, this is amazing. So it's for tots and pre-K and I didn't print out everything um, because we didn't use everything. There were a few things, again, handwriting, um, some numbers over 20, those sort of things that we just didn't use. Um, But really quick, let me tell you sort of what's in this pack. So there's literacy activities, letter sound matching, letter case matching, word tracing. Um, It did focus on the letter F for 4th of July and flag, Um, letter sorting, word puzzles, alphabet sequencing puzzles, number puzzles, uh, 1 through 5, 1 through 10, and 11 through 20, counting 1 through 10, cutting and pasting patterns, more sorting by size, shape matching, um, and then a ton of pre-writing and fine motor skills. There's tracing shapes, tracing horizontal and vertical lines. There was lots of cutting. do a dot um, pictures and then lacing cards. And then there's also some visual discrimination activities. Which one is different? Um, Let me flip this over here. Again, word puzzles and then some more number puzzles. So I printed an extra copy and I will just sort of show you what we did. So there's like an American flag do a dot. There's this United States do a dot. Um, This one is supposed to be a lacing card, but I didn't print any of these on cardstock. I just printed them on regular paper. So what we did with this was we used a um, hole punch and just sort of went around the flag with the hole punch. Um, Again, the pre-writing, horizontal and vertical lines. Um, These are the pre-writing, the tracing of the shapes. And then there's a stars page as well. And then we have our cutting practice went this way, just some fun little, and then a straight lines cutting practice. Um, This is the circle, the one that's different, and this is sort of the easy version for toddlers, and then a little bit harder version for pre-K. The pictures are a little bit more advanced and detailed. Then we have beginning sound matching. Uh, We have the upper and lower case letter sound matching. Fan. It's like blowing my hair right in my face. It's 109 degrees today with 52% humidity. It's kind of miserable. Um, so letter case matching. Then there's a sort the letters, upper and lower case, E and F. Circle all of the things that begin with F. We actually did this twice. We did one with just the do a dot marker and then one that was a circle. My son is circling. Um, these are little sequencing puzzles. So we had flag, We had one through five, and then we had one through 10, the American flag. How many are in each row? And um, this came with little number cards that you could cut out, but we used our our subitizing cards. And then there's a little bit more. This one's um, six through 10. Then there was the cut and paste the missing number. So this one was really great for fine motor. Um, It has the missing numbers just on a separate sheet and your child can cut them out and we glued them. That one was really fun. We've got more patterning pieces, um, shape puzzles. And so it gives you half and then the other half you can cut out and prepare in advance. And then you get um, American flag printables. And so we could sort small, medium and large. Oh, there they are. And then these are all just sort of the cutting and 
um, the cutout pages that I had. So those were all of the activities that we did throughout the week. We had family in town and we spent so much time in our pool that week. And so we weren't really like around to keep our normal schooling schedule and um, we didn't have curriculum anyway. So we sort of did that just to sort of keep our minds engaged. Um, next, we had some other things that we did. So I'm going to show you sort of the books I pulled from our home library and then all of the books that we checked out from the library. All right, I've got my camera turned around here. So the first thing that we did was I checked out this We Sing America CD from the library and we just played this like whenever we could all week. It's got quite a few songs on it. Let's see if I can take this out here. It's got, what is that, 52 different songs and also like quotes from presidents. So like the Gettysburg Address, there's some quotes from John F. Kennedy. Um, there's some other really fun quotes there, but it's got tons and tons of patriotic songs. And I really wanted my kids to learn My Country Tis of Thee and You're a Grand Old Flag. So they haven't quite gotten it down yet. We're going to keep this for another few weeks and just sort of listen, keep listening. It's a really fun summer CD. So that we, um, we had playing whenever we were like eating breakfast or in the swimming pool or in the car. We just sort of played that CD. We also, when we went to see the fireworks, we had roughly, oh gosh, I want to say it's like a 40 minute drive to the fireworks. Um, but with traffic and everything, it was an hour and a half both ways. So I popped in the Liberty Kids Complete Series, these DVDs. I found these on Zulily a few years ago, and it's the entire series. Um, so we popped this in. It was really engaging for the kids, really fun. I'm not entirely sure that they understood all of the content, but we watched that nevertheless. Next from our home library, I pulled a few books. I had this one here. Um, called If You Lived at the Time of the American Revolution. Now, I do have the entire If You Lived series, and it's all sort of early America history books. Now, this one was, um, it's a little bit old for them, but we really enjoyed flipping through and just kind of talking about the good old days, like the houses they lived in, the kind of clothes they wore. We talked about soldiers in the war and what they do, um, what they did when they were fighting and sort of, um, why they were fighting to keep our country free. And then we just sort of talked about like how you grocery shop, what kind of music did you listen to? You know, there wasn't transportation, so you rode horses. Um, and this was just kind of a fun, like super brief introduction into history, but also into American history. We have this book here um, called Smart About the Presidents. And we also have the smart about the 50 states and so these are really fun just sort of scrambled fact books and um we really just kind of went over california because that's where we lived so we talked about california and some fun facts about it and then flipped through and you know maybe if my kids saw a little picture like they saw this one and asked why is she dancing and we talked about hawaii and we've been to hawaii and that's one of the states and then we pointed it out on our map and just very gently eased into this. We didn't read all of the facts at all or even talk about all 50 states. Um, we kind of talked about other states that we have family living in. Um, so that was just a fun little book. We also have the Smart About the Presidents. Same thing. We actually didn't really even open this one. Um, it was out, and I think my kids flipped through it a few times and might have pointed out some of the pictures, but we really didn't get into this. But this is a really fun series of books. Um, if you have children, maybe in the... Um, like second to fifth grade, maybe even the third to fifth grade. Um, this one we loved. It's the Usborne Wonders of the USA Shine a Light book. These are so much fun. Um, you can use them with a flashlight or you can like hold it up to a window. Um, but you've got these um, pictures here and then there's always like a blank space and you can either like shine a flashlight through the book and sort of, you know, see what it's talking about or if you just flip the page, you'll be able to see it. Um, so, for example, here's the White House, and I don't even know what we're looking for. Oh, cool, it shows you, like, inside the White House. But uh, we loved this. My kids, like most kids, are obsessed with flashlights, and so we just sort of looked through that book. Actually, we read this one quite a few times, again, just because it has flashlights. Uh, we have the Scrambled States of America. This one was really fun. It's just a little picture storybook talking about all the states and how they get mixed up and... Um, yeah, it took us a few tries. It's a bit long and it's kind of, you know, they, because they don't know really what the states are, 
it took a little while, but it was great. I think for like a kindergarten through fifth grade, that would even be really fun. So the next book we have is The Fourth of July Story. This book was great, and I know I got it because it's in the Beautiful Feet Early American History curriculum, and so I kind of just wanted to see. I, you know, I pre-plan everything, and so I'm planning on doing early American history when my son is in kindergarten um, using the Beautiful Feet books. Um, that's two years away, so we'll see if it happens. But for now, that's kind of what my plan is. Um, and so I checked this out because I wanted to see just sort of how it goes. Now the pictures are really like old timey illustrations, like from the sixties and seventies. And there's little bits of information every two or three pages is kind of like a chapter. So it's like a, a little chapter book for students. And, um, you know, if you do maybe one of these little chapters a day, it was great. That's how we did it. It was just one chapter a day in the days leading up to and after the 4th of July, and we really enjoyed it. If we tried to get through the entire book in one sitting, it wouldn't have happened. Um, but that was a really, really nice book that we were able to find. Next, we have America, a Patriotic Primer. This one I loved because it's got these beautiful illustrations. It is an alphabet book, but there's so much going on. It reminds me kind of of like a Where's Waldo, but you don't actually have to find anything. But every letter stands for something, and then it's got all kinds of different facts all around the page for that something. Like, for example, here's the Constitution, and then all these little different things about the Constitution, and even around the border of the page. Um, is facts. And so this book was really fun. We kind of just took our time looking for things, um, you know, and we we do it in different sittings. We didn't get through the whole thing at once because my kids would get kind of overwhelmed and whatever. It's not like we read it as a bedtime story or anything, but we also used it as kind of an I Spy book. Like that's why I said it reminds me of a, Where, a Where's Waldo book because there is so much going on that you can use it that way. Like, oh, you know, I spy a train. I spy the America flag and... Um, so this one was a really fun book. Next we have Lady Liberty's Holiday. And this was just a really cute um, storybook about the Statue of Liberty. And, um, you know, Statue of Liberty, she takes off and she sort of goes on a trip around the country and she sees all of the sites in all of the different states and then sort of decides at the end that the only place she wants to be is right there in Ellis Island. Um, so it was a really, really cute book. Next we have The Star Spangled Banner. This one was really fun talking about all of the different America flags. Um, and then again, it's just the words of the song and it's all the verses and with pictures. And so it doesn't exactly, um, oops. So it doesn't really explain, you know, the lyrics or anything, but it's got the pictures. And so your kids can kind of decipher what the picture's saying, and they may not know what the words are saying, but they can kind of put two and two together. This is probably um, an older, early elementary, maybe kindergarten through second would be good. It's got the music in the back. My son loves um, sheet music, and that's from our hymn books at church. He always likes to see the note pages for the music. Uh, but this one was a really, was a really cute book, The Star spangled banner next we have this version of the star spangled banner so in this book um, there are different chapters and um it sort of talks about the different um the different events leading up to the revolutionary war and how the star spangled banner the song came about so we have here the war and different facts um, but it's got really beautiful illustrations there's some francis scott key um, bombs bursting in air there's some other facts and again, sheet music and other pictures and things. So that was a nice one. I would say this book is probably great for like second to fourth grade, maybe even fifth grade. Let's see. Next, I got these other two books here, um, also from Lynn Cheney. One of the other books I got, oh, this, this America Patriotic Primer was by her. Um, these are for an older crowd. So we have Washington Cross the Delaware and We the People, the Story of the Constitution. This is a wintertime story for young patriots. Um, but I can't even see what that is here. <laughs> um, so this one is quite wordy. It's obviously going to be for an older elementary or even middle school child. But I thought the illustrations were really pretty. Um, and it really just talks about... 
you know, Revolutionary War. And then it's got quotes from different um, historical people, different historical figures. So this one we we didn't read because it's, like I said, it's just a bit too old. Um, but we did enjoy flipping through and sort of just talking about little things that we did understand. And then here's the story of the Constitution. Again, very similar events leading up to the Constitution and its signing and ratification. Um, we didn't read this one either. Again, it's just too wordy, but the pictures were pretty, so we did flip through them. Next, we have Liberty, and this book is about a little boy, and he um, he sells newspapers, but he is charged with the task. Let's see, there's all these words, but that's not really what it's like. He is tasked with giving a message to um, the sculptor of the Statue of Liberty, um, sort of as the statue is built and they get close to the unveiling date, and it talks about um, suffragettes. You can see her, her face is covered, um, talks about how the Statue of Liberty was a gift from France and just sort of all these anticipation and events leading up to the unveiling of the Statue of Liberty. So that one was really kind of fun. Little picture book. We have here A is for America, an American alphabet. And again, this one just sort of goes through the alphabet and then has these beautiful illustrations um, with some little facts here. And what I liked about this one is in the facts down at the bottom of the page, the letter is used multiple times. So it's got a lot of alliteration. And then sort of off in the side here, there's more um, like facts for older students, a little bit more detailed talking about, um, for example, this is A is for America. And then this has got the founding of America and the 13 colonies. And, you know, we won our freedom from Britain. But right here is sort of for a younger crowd. So this is great if you have different age children, maybe a younger elementary and even up to middle school to get all of those facts. Um, there's just tons and tons of information in this one. So that one was really fun. A is for America. Next we have Ose, oh can you see? America's symbols, landmarks, and inspiring words. And this one I think we will be purchasing for our home library. It was a little bit too old um, for my kids. Again, it's really wordy, but there is so much information. Important places, interesting objects, inspiring words, um, celebrating American holidays. So it just gives an overview of you know, America and all of our cultural significances. And it's really great. The illustrations are really fun. They're really beautiful. Just um, these watercolor illustrations. But there's a lot of information in here too. So this one was great. Like I said, I think we will be purchasing this one. We didn't really get through much of it. We sort of flipped through it. And if my kids liked something, I would just briefly tell them what it was. They thought the faces and the rocks was super cool. So that one was really fun. We will, um, like I said, we'll use this in future, year, future years and studies of America, which is why I think we're going to get this. Happy Birthday America is just sort of a 4th of July picture book. And it talks about this family and they have their annual 4th of July family reunion and just sort of how they celebrate the day from the parades in the morning to the barbecues and swimming and the fireworks. It's super relatable for little kids. The illustrations are okay. They're kind of the, you know, computer animated illustrations, but it was a really nice picture book. And it was fun because my little boy was able to say like, oh, we did that. Oh, we did that. Oh, that's what we do. So that was really fun. Also, you guys, Lynn Cheney, she is Miss America author. So we have R50 States, A Family Adventure Across America. Now this is sort of about a family going on a road trip across America and it's got all 50 states. And this is, um, again, tons and tons of information. Um, the information is divided up into bite-sized chunks by state. Uh, so you can see they sort of start on the East Coast and move their way um, across the country and there's just lots of information. So we didn't go over all of these things. Again, it was one of those things where we, we did California and then we sort of flipped through and if my kids saw something interesting, I would stop and read, um, read the little facts that were on that page. But this one was really fun. Beautiful book. We may purchase this for our home library as well. 
Next, we have Saving the Liberty Bell. Now, this book is about a little boy named John Jacob, and he lives during the Revolutionary War. And in this book, the British Army are um, coming to all of the towns and all of the different colonies, and they are basically looting. They are taking anything of value, and they are sending it back to their king and also using it to help fund the war effort. And so John Jacob and his dad one day go to Philadelphia, and his dad tells them that they are joining the revolution. And what they end up doing is they take the Liberty Bell and they hide it um, and they take it back to their town in Northampton town and keep it safe from the British so that the British can't steal it. Um, They have some pretty tense adventures on the way, Um, but it was a really, it was a really cute book and it's actually a true story. So this one was a really fun book. And then last we also have hats off for the 4th of July and this is just a really sweet rhyming book that talks about all of the things that you see during your 4th of July parade so you see the baton twirlers and all of the cowboys you see different floats and so this was kind of fun because we um we actually do go to a 4th of July parade every year so this was kind of fun to talk about oh we saw that in our parade or we didn't see that in our parade Next, we have I Pledge Allegiance. This book is my favorite. I have been looking for a book like this for probably a year and a half. So it's I Pledge Allegiance, and it has the pledge in it, like a lot of books do. But this breaks down literally word for word what the Pledge of Allegiance means. Because when you're trying to teach a preschool or kindergartner the Pledge of Allegiance, there's a lot of really big words in there that they don't know what it means. So I pledge pledge is a promise, allegiance to, allegiance is loyalty. Um, you know, you can keep going. The Republic, the United States is a Republic, which means that we are the leaders who, we elect our leaders who make the laws. Um, it talks about for which it stands, stand at attention, look at the American flag, place your hand on your heart, right? So it shows you how to do the pledge, how to show respect for your country. Um, there's one part in here, I may have already passed it, but It talks about the colors of the flag and why the flag is red, white, and blue because the colors have meaning. Um, Indivisible, indivisible means unbreakable. Our country cannot be split into separate parts. It's so good. Um, It just literally breaks it down into just the most easy way to understand everything. But I, I love this book. We are definitely purchasing this one for our home. Next, we have I Pledge Allegiance, and this one was kind of interesting. This one is about a little girl whose grandmother is um, working to become an American citizen, and so she's learning all about the United States, just as her grandma is doing, so that she better understands why her grandma wants to become a citizen, and at the end, she takes a citizenship test, and she and her grandma get to say the pledge together, and it's super sweet. Next, we have Our American Flag. This one was really fun. The illustrations were so different. They looked like little, um, oh, like little wood carvings almost, or like paper piecing illustrations. I don't know, they were just very different. But this is so cool because it is a history of the American flag and all of the versions of the American flag. So you see here, um, we have like a version with the British flag still inside. Um, We've got the original first official flag, the second flag, Mary Pinker's Gill. We have the Star Spangled Banner talking about the flag. Um, Then we have our most current flag and, you know, the 13 colonies. And then we have sort of how it changes after states were added. Teaches us how do we show the flag respect. Um, And then it talks about... Um, just a brief history of the flag and some facts. This one was really fun. My son is obsessed with the American flag and every time we pass one in the car or something, he yells out, America! And so this was really fun so that he could sort of see how the flag is now, but also how it was and how it started. Next, we have Hooray for the 4th of July. Again, this one was just a super um, cute little picture books with some, you know, facts and things about what what people do on the 4th to celebrate, right? So there's some games, there's some beaches, there's some picnics, and then we have the fireworks at the end. So this one was a really cute, easy little read. 
Next we have 4th of July mice. Again, just another little picture book talking about how these little mice celebrate. Um, it was a really simple one. My daughter loved this one. She thought they were cute, but again, just sort of different things that they do to celebrate the hot summer and the 4th of July. It was great. Really cute little book. Next we have Stars and Stripes, the story of the American flag. And again, this just talks about old glory and why we have our flag, what it represents, um, how it was made. This is sort of like when we use the flag, um, just different things at the Olympics, what it represents, just a nice little picture book. Happy 4th of July, Jenny Sweeney is just a little rhyming picture book talking about the different things that um, people do on the 4th of July. So it's got some cute illustrations and just what everybody around town is doing. Next we have Red, White, and Boom. And again, this is another picture book that just sort of takes us through the day. Um, it's a rhyming book again about what everybody's doing on the 4th of July. They spend a lot of time at the beach here, which was fun because we're in California, so everyone goes to the beach on 4th of July. Um, we were down there this year, and then they watch the fireworks in the park at the end, which was really sweet. My America, a poetry atlas of the United States is one that I think we're gonna add to our library for future um, America history and geography studies. And it sort of takes you through each region of the United States. Um, it highlights the different states, where they are, and then gives a quick little fact sheet. And then for each of the 50 states, there is a poem um, just about each little state. Now, we read a few of these, not all of them, just because it was such a big book. I mean, it's, it's, gosh. I mean, it's almost, it's over 70. Now, we didn't read all of these, but we read probably most of them. Um, it's over 70 pages of poetry. So, but it just takes you through different regions. And this would be really great if you were doing um, a year of American history or um, the geography of America or the 50 states, or even if you just want some, um, oh, what am I thinking of? If you want some memory work, you know, memorize some of these poems about your state for some memory work would be a really good one. So this is a really good one, I think. Like I said, I believe we're gonna be adding this to our home library. Next we have America the Beautiful, and this just takes you through the lyrics of the America the Beautiful song, but it also takes you on a tour, oh goodness, but it also takes you on a tour of America, sort of um, each of the different, again, the landmarks, shows you the different sites, and it's just set to the lyrics of the song. Really pretty illustrations. So that was a really nice one, America the Beautiful. Okay, we're getting towards the end here. Um, the next book we have is You Wouldn't Want to Be a Worker on the Statue of Liberty. Now, I oh, I wanted to get one of these books when I went to the Scholastic Book Sale Hall. I wanted to get all of them, but they didn't have it. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it right up here. Um, but I checked this out to the library mostly to see kind of what they were about. And to be honest, I thought it was going to be a little bit above um, my preschooler's head, but you guys, he loved it. We did just a few pages every day, um, but the illustrations and all of the different bite-sized chunks of information really helped. So while there was a ton of information, it was given in small doses and each sort of had its own picture. Um, and so that really helped. So these are so, so much fun. Again, we plan on adding all of these books from the whole series to our home library. Next, I got this book here called Oh Say Can You See, and I was shocked that it actually still had um, the CD in it. And so we were able to pull out the CD and listen to some some more patriotic songs that, um, 
you know, along with the We Sing CD. So this book is cool. So in the middle, across every page, it's got the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner. And then there's facts everywhere, but it's also a lift the flap. And every flap is kind of a, um, did you know, did you know, did you know? And so it's just got tons of information about, you know, landmarks and, you know, sort of all about our flag and the colors and why our flag is the color that it is. Um, just all sorts of different things. This page was really fun. It talks about how many people are there, um, different versions of the flag throughout history. And then we have the Pledge of Allegiance over here. So this was a really fun hands-on book that both of my kids actually really enjoyed. And the very last book I have here is The Star Spangled Banner. Now this is really beautifully illustrated. It's the story of a boy named Jed McTavish and his brother, and they are fishermen during the Revolutionary War. And they um, are captured by the British and taken prisoner overnight. The British um, um, confiscate their ship because it's you know full of fish and things on it. And so they're taken prisoner overnight. And one of the prisoners that they meet is um, Francis Scott Key. And so they're watching the battle overnight um, of Fort McHenry and they see the fires and the smoke. And, you know, in the morning when they wake up, the American flag is still standing. And um, the Americans, they're, you know, they're home. They weren't defeated. And so it talks about how Mr. Um, Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner after that. And then at the end, it's got the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner. So this was a really, just another really great book. Anyway, that's all I've got. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, if you're interested in following along on our journey, hit that subscribe button down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video.